Imagine the following exchanges. How was work today? It was pretty good. This report I've been working on for the last month, gave it to my boss, she read it, got really angry. It was awesome. <laughs> or, how'd that job interview go? Oh, it was terrific. The guy I'd be working for, quite an angry man. I hope I get the job. So why don't we have these conversations? Because we view anger as a fundamentally negative emotion. And it is, except when it's not. Now let's acknowledge what most people in this room believe to be true, and that is anger has significant downsides. We have suppressed anger, anger that we hold within, uh, that can result in really negative psychological and health effects. We also have aberrant or deviant anger, anger that goes beyond social norms that can manifest in violence and rage and bullying. Again, huge downsides. But I want to make the case to you today that anger has a sweet spot, where it's functional, where it's useful, and it has some surprising and interesting upsides. And we'll talk about this in three arenas, in leadership, in negotiation and compromise, and in emotional intelligence. If you were given the opportunity to select your boss or the leader of your organization, most of you would probably pick someone who's happy and upbeat and encouraging because you believe you would perform better for that kind of boss. But in all likelihood, some of you would actually perform better for a leader who displays more negative emotions, including anger. And this comes out of some interesting research in leadership and followership. And the reason is something psychologists call epistemic motivation, which is the inclination to thoroughly understand an experience. Individuals who have high levels of epistemic motivation tend to focus in on the meaning behind the emotion. That is, they process the anger cognitively. They might say to themselves, hmm, my boss is angry. I wonder why oh, maybe I'm not performing all that well, and then they would seek to modify their performance. Individuals who have low levels of epistemic motivation, however, tend to focus in on the emotion itself, the anger itself. They might say to themselves, hmm, my boss is angry. I don't like this. So next time you're at work and your boss gets angry, ask yourself, are you focusing in on the emotion or the meaning behind? The emotion. If it's the latter, you may perform better for a boss who gets angry. All right, let's step out of the world of work and into the world of geopolitical conflict, where unfortunately long-term hatred can run deep. But what if I were to tell you that we might be able to counter some of the effects of this hatred by making people even angrier? Well, a research team from Stanford and IDC Herzliya in Israel uh, investigated this idea, and they did it with a sample of Israelis just prior to an Israeli-Palestinian summit that took place several years ago. And they had their subjects read an inflammatory editorial that was designed to increase anger. And while they hypothesized that this heightened anger would further cement hatred, toward the Palestinians for some Israelis. They also hypothesized that an increase, a boost in anger, would also correspond for other Israelis with an increase in their willingness to compromise. So how can the same stimulus actually take us down these divergent paths? Well, we know from neuroscience that different emotions activate different parts of the brain. Anxiety and fear, for instance, activate the parts of the brain associated with avoid behaviors. Anger, it turns out, activates the part of the brain associated with approach behaviors because when we get angry, we believe that we can alter or change the outcome, so we step toward. Now here's where it gets interesting because it turns out we approach in two different ways we approach destructively or aggressively if we believe that unwelcome behaviors result from innate characteristics of an individual or group. 
but we approach constructively or in a more accommodating, compromising sort of way if we believe that unwelcome behaviors result from situational factors. So in this context, that might be something like ineffective leadership. All right, back to the study. So the researchers found that for those Israelis who viewed the Palestinians through a, an innate characteristics lens, further cemented the hatred, inflamed the situation. But, and here's the upside, for those Israelis who viewed the Palestinians through a situational lens, increasing their anger actually increased their willingness to compromise. So it turns out that anger actually has the potential to be a productive mechanism for creating constructive approach behaviors. All right, one more anger-related question for you to ponder this afternoon, and this one is in the area of emotional intelligence, which is the ability to perceive, understand, and regulate emotion. And here's the question for you. Is it emotionally intelligent to want to feel anger? Well, at first glance, you might think, hey, if somebody's emotionally intelligent, they're going to push those unpleasant emotions to the side, and they're going to want to feel really pleasant emotions. But there's increasing evidence that emotionally intelligent people willingly embrace feeling anger. And they do this because they tend to prefer emotions that are useful in achieving specific goals more then they prefer pleasant emotions. Not only that, when they take this felt, felt anger and express it at work, their subordinates respect them more than their peers who express no anger at all. Despite appearances, the moral to our story is not to go out and select a bunch of angry, emotionally intelligent leaders in order to achieve world peace. The moral to our story is actually much more, uh, much more aligned with something Aristotle said. And he said that anyone can get angry, that is easy. But to do this to the right person, to the right extent, at the right time, with the right motive, and in the right way, that is not for everyone, nor is that easy. In other words, Aristotle seems to be telling us that timing, intensity, motive, and approach are keys to the upsides of anger. So next time you experience anger, either your own or someone else's, search for that sweet spot. What you find may pleasantly surprise you. Thanks so much. <laughs>